Hey, yarn everyone. Welcome to Minchinbury Anglican Church Families Online. I'm really excited to be here today with a good friend of mine, Tim Beelhart. Welcome, Tim. Thanks, mate. Good to be here. It's great to have you. Can you maybe, Tim, just tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe what you do for a job, why I might be interviewing you today? <laughs> Yeah, great. So I work for Anglican Youth Works as a children's ministry advisor, uh, primarily in the Wollongong region, which is where I first kind of met Matt. Uh, also lecturer at Youth Works College on children's ministry and family ministry. And so that's why we're particularly talking to that. That's right. You actually lectured me in family ministry a couple of years ago, and here we are. I'm now a family's pastor. So you've done a good job. Very mate. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> um, Listen, obviously, um, things have changed in the, in the landscape of ministry at the moment. Um, we're stuck in our homes. That's, that's the reality of where yes. we are. Um, look, our, our, our medium for ministry has changed. The way that we're doing ministry, we can't meet together anymore. But I suppose the first thing I want to ask you and, and for all of our parents, has our, has our purpose or sort of the core function of our family ministry changed just because we can't meet together? Yeah, it's a great question. And there's a, an author that I've been reading recently who talks about you don't want to mistake your mission for your strategy. Mm. Uh, and so when we talk about family ministry, our mission is we want to grow our children to know and love and obey Jesus. Yep. That's our mission. Now, our primary strategy has been uh, to use program ministries, children's ministry, uh, things like that mm. at church, and then equip parents at home to follow that up. Um, now, there's a whole lot of reasons why I think that's maybe a little bit backwards to start with. Yeah. However, our particular current crisis has meant that we're forced to reverse all of that. So our strategy can't be meeting together at church on a Sunday or on a Friday or whenever we gather together regularly. Uh, our strategy now is how do we help parents disciple their kids at home, which, as I said, I would argue is actually the primary strategy God has for us anyway. Okay, so just because our medium has changed, our, our strategy has changed, we're still trying to disciple children to know and love Jesus at home. That's always been, and that is our, our mission moving forward. That's what we're trying to achieve. And so, um, absolutely. Yeah. And so, doing that ministry at home, then, so obviously, parents are going to um, be spending a lot more time with their kids and, and having those Jesus conversations and that sort of stuff at home. Um, we're going to face some challenges, but do you see that as a, a bad thing that we're doing that at home now? Look, uh, there are significant challenges. And one of the significant challenges is we've been forced into this situation with an otherwise ordinarily stressful event. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of reasons to be quite stressed at the moment. There's a lot of anxiety going on. Uh, there's a lot of job losses. Uh, there's a lot of sickness. Uh, it is very likely that people we know and love will get sick mm. uh, and perhaps even die. And we have to deal with that reality. Um, however, uh, it does force us into this situation where parents do take the primary responsibility of raising their children, mm. which, as I said, I think is God's uh, way of ordering the creation anyway. I think that's his primary intent is that parents take on that primary responsibility. And so there's a great opportunity to actually step into uh, what God has called us as parents to do. Yeah. Uh, I talk about how parents are the primary disciple makers of their children. Um, whether you like it or not, as parents, you are, and, and me for my two kids, I am the primary spiritual influence mm -hmm. on them, uh, regardless of what they do at church ordinarily. Uh, and so this opportunity gives us uh, the chance to really step into that and to think about, okay, I am the primary influence mm -hmm. of my child's spiritual life. How can I do that well? Uh, and so that's what, yeah, we're going to talk about. Do you want me to talk about strategies now for doing that? Yeah, yeah, that's actually a, a really good um, kind of segue. I was going to say, um, so what would you consider to be a, a successful ministry at home to your children? And and obviously some parents are going to be feeling daunted by that prospect. It's a bit, might be a bit of a change from, from what they're used to. Mm. Um, do we have to get it right? And what does it look like to get it right? And does it have to be perfect and polished and shiny and, and just kind of all those sort of things? 
Yeah, that's great. I mean, the first thing is, no, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Uh, but I want to follow that by do something. Yeah. And so as I was thinking about this this morning, uh, I was thinking there's uh, three I's, three words starting with the I, which I think will help us. Uh, one is that your family ministry wants to be intentional. So find particular times that you will do something. Uh, it might be an intentionally saying prayers of grace before you eat a meal together. Mm. It might be an intentional Bible reading with your kids uh, one time during the week. It might be an intentional prayer that you offer your kids as you put them to bed or as they wake up in the morning. Mm. But find times where you can be intentional in discipling your children. Uh, the second one is immersive. Uh, what I mean by that is it's a holistic thing. Uh, when Moses talks to the Israelites in Deuteronomy, he talks about, you're always talking about Jesus. You're always talking about God. When you lie down, when mm. you get up, uh, when you walk down the road, when you go to the shops. So find all the opportunities at home to be talking about Jesus. And Jesus' conversations will come up all the time if you look for them. Mm. When your kids are talking about coronavirus and their fears you can talk to them about how jesus has shaped the world and why we can talk to him and pray to him about our anxieties at the moment yeah. uh, lots of different conversations will come up but all the time just be looking for those uh, holistic ways of uh, immersing your family in the gospel uh, and the third one is incremental and uh, this kind of addresses what you said at the start which is just step up a little bit um, if you haven't done anything with your family, you don't know where to start, find something small that you can do just mm. to turn that notch up just a little bit. Mm. It might be saying grace uh, around dinner for the first time ever as your family. That's great. Do that. Do it once a week. Uh, if you're already saying grace regularly, but you don't really ever read the Bible with your kids, find a Bible that you can read with them uh, and read a passage. Mm. Just again, uh, start simple one day a week uh, and do that. You, if you're doing that regularly, find something else to dial up a notch, finding other times to pray. But incremental, just find little things. If you set out you know, you've got all this time and you think, oh, great, I can do an hour a day of deep devotion with my kids and we're going to study the Psalms together and pull it apart and then sing worship songs for half an hour. You'll crash and burn on the first yeah. attempt and then you'll just be uh, burdened by guilt and shame. Yeah. And that's not what we want. It's certainly not God's intention for us. So something incremental yeah. that will just turn up the dial a little bit on your faith conversations at home would be awesome. Yeah, great. So we don't have to get it exactly polished and perfect right from the start. It's going to be messy and that's okay. We're all learning and we're just moving in little baby steps uh, as we move towards that. Absolutely. Discipling children at home. And we're playing the long game. Yeah. So, you know, there, there is a long time left for our families, God willing. Uh, and so starting small now, God is infinitely patient and he's patient with us as learners of how to raise our mm. kids. He's patient with our children as they work out what it means to love and follow him. Mm. Uh, so remember God's patience, remember his grace uh, and remember we're in it for the long game. So making mistakes here and there, that's okay. Yeah, cool. Well, I suppose the last question that I wanted to ask you, Tim, um, is if parents are trying to step things up incrementally, maybe they've never done anything before. Um, as a staff team, me and the other staff will be providing um, resources and family devotionals that parents can use. But I was wondering if you could maybe share any advice on other resources or places that parents could look at or look to just to try and get some help or to come up with some ideas. Yeah, great question. We live in a world that is just flush with resources. There is so much available. And actually, it's really easy to get overwhelmed by the amount of choice that's out there. Uh, so a couple of really simple things. Number one, have a Bible at home mm. that you can uh, read with your kids. So depending on their developmental age, if they're toddlers, if they're primary school kids, if they're high school kids, obviously you're going to have different Bibles mm. for different ages, but find something that you can just read a short section of with your kids. Mm. Uh, number two, find some music. Music really taps into the way that we respond to God and no. express our devotion to him. Uh, and again, Age appropriate. For young kids, it might be a Colin Buchanan song. For yeah. primary kids, it might be something from Ben Bakula. For those who are in upper primary or high school, get, jump onto Spotify and find some of the songs that you would normally do at church. 
Um, if you guys haven't already created a church playlist or a children's ministry mm -hmm. playlist, that's a great thing to do. Yeah. Uh, and Spotify is, I mean, it's free. Um, and so you just jump on and listen to some music. Yeah. Cool. And then if you want to get into uh, other digital resources, again, there is so much out there, but a couple of YouTube channels that you could uh, set your kids up with. Um, Saddleback Kids is on YouTube. They've got some great great videos. I use those in children's ministry all the time. They're just fun cartoon recreations of Bible stories. Yeah. Uh, and Crossroads Kids Club, Crossroads Kids Club, they're another great resource. They've got their own website, but their videos are also on Vimeo and YouTube. Awesome. And again, they're just really creative, really faithful recreations of Bible stories and uh, Christian themes. So there's some really simple places you can go. Again, it's all free uh, and you can just help your kids to just continue to learn and follow and love Jesus. Yeah, cool. Thanks so much for that, Tim. Look, um, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure you're really busy at the moment at YouthWorks trying to help out all the other... Oh, it's a pleasure hanging out with you, Matt. What was that? It's a pleasure hanging out with you, Matt. Oh, mate, it's been great. It's been really good. Um, yeah, look, um, families, tune in here. Each week we'll be uploading resources. Hopefully we'll have some more interviews. We might get to chat to Tim again. Um, and we can help you and assist you in doing that discipling of your children at home. Thanks again, Tim. Have a good day, mate. We'll see you around soon. Thanks, Matt. Cheers.